Hello and welcome to another episode of the African Five Aside podcast. Uh, we're continuing to preview the teams in the Africa Cup of Nations. We want to do uh, 24 teams and speak to 24 writers or journalists covering those teams. Today, I'm very, very happy to be joined by Hamza Rahmani, uh, a journalist and a commentator, especially, who's going to be commentating uh, on the matches of the Africa Cup of Nations uh, for B in Sports uh, in French. So if you have B in Sports in French, you can be hearing Hamza commentate on the matches. And we're going to be talking about both of our countries, uh, Algeria, the Algerian national team. So Hamza, we're going to start with uh, the section that I like to call the State of the Union, meaning how is the Algerian national team doing? What is the general atmosphere? Um, can you maybe take us through the journey from two years ago, the the African Cup of Nations? We were on a, a winning streak or an unbeaten streak of, I think, 34 matches, 35 matches. Uh, we were defending champions. We're going to the African Cup of Nations, uh, perhaps as favorites. And we crash out in the group stages. A few months later, we we're eliminated in the World Cup with the last kick of the game. And take us from that to now, how do Algerian national team supporters and journalists feel? Are we confident? How has this journey been for you? Um, the game against Cameroon was like the biggest crash maybe ever for Algeria football. Uh, you have the possibility to go to the World Cup in Qatar, which was the main goal for, for Algeria and for Jamal Belmadi because he's living in Qatar and he's it's such a special country for him. So next months were really unknown. We didn't know if Jamel Belmadi was going uh, as a technical manager for the, the national team. We had some new players since. Uh, young generation, uh, many players that were born in France, like Buanani, Hajjam, Aitnouri, uh, Shaibi, more recently Guiri. So we have like a new generation which is coming for the, the national team and you had to build the confidence up again, which was not uh, simple because of uh, the double crash in AFCON and the, the game uh, against uh, Cameroon. If you take the, the last year, uh, 2023, Algeria played 10 games and did not lose any of it, any of them. Seven wins, three draw, and you played against friendly games against Tunisia, against Senegal, and against Egypt. When you see just the result, you can say and you can think, oh, come on, it's positive. But when you are watching the games against Tunisia, in June, Tunisia gave us so much trouble and it was like a little bit unexpected. Then you were playing against Senegal at Dakar. Senegal who did not lose any game at home since like maybe more than 10 years. You won one nil, but without the goalkeeper, Anthony Mandrea, you should have lose that game. You had like two chances, you scored one and you concede many. And against Egypt, which is really not a friendly game because Algeria-Egypt is like the biggest crush in African football, maybe. Um, it was in United Arab Emirates and in October, it was a good start of the game. But then like maybe around 25 or 30 minutes, Egypt was down uh, with a red card. And after that, Algeria like stopped to play and Egypt scores the first goal. and. It was like, yes, yeah, Algeria had very few opportunities to, 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 to score, concede a lot of opportunities. And even if Slimani equalized at the, the last minute, the way Egypt uh, annihilates Algeria offensive um, uh, possibilities was really disturbing. So, yeah you built maybe the confidence of how to win games, like in, in Mozambique, which is really not easy when you are playing uh, in Africa. But when you see the games, there is not very much of uh, control. 
So from what, yeah, it's very, very interesting points that you're, that you're mentioning, Hamza. Um, what I'm going to ask you then is these new players that have come in, you know, your Hajjam, your Abu Anani, your uh, Eit Nuri, Shaibi, uh, Guiri, all these players that have come in, even Mondrea. Um, do you feel like they're fully integrated into this national team? Do you feel like uh, they can start contributing and they can carry the national team? They can carry the national team immediately? Or do you feel like there still needs a little bit of time of adaptation? And do we have that time before the African Cup of Nations? That's my question to you. Playing in Africa, I think, is a mindset first. You have to adapt after that to the physical physical way to play, of playing physical abilities. Not the way to, of being strong, but the way to be able to repeat efforts in difficult condition, uh, be able to adapt to the heat, be able to adapt to the extreme humidity, to the altitude when you're playing, for example, in Ethiopia, uh, to the quality of the pitch. So when you were born in France, for example, most of them, and you come in Africa, even if you have so much quality, it will be difficult. And you need time. So some of the players, Fares Shaibi, have... Uh, I was amazed by the way and how quick he adapts to African football. Anthony Mondrea became the number one goalkeeper since three, four months now. But all the players like Buanani, which 18 years old, Hajam, which is not playing uh, with his club, uh, La Rossi in uh, Sheffield, not playing much. Um, all the, those players, and even I mean Guiri, which is a good player from French Liga in Rennes, Hussemawa from Ice Roma now. They need time. And today, maybe they are not able to contribute as much as their abilities, technical abilities, are supposed to be in, in that team. But you need time. We had Mahrez, for example. He needed many, many years in Africa, many, many years of playing in Africa and playing um, on those elements to be able to perform the way he is. So let's talk about uh, tactics, Jamal Belmadi and in, in, in general, the coach. The coach is a coach who, if you look at, I mean, I believe he's in charge of six, more than 60 matches, maybe 62 matches, something like this. If you look at the wins, the loss, the drosses, the, sorry, the wins, the draws and the losses, it's very impressive. Uh, I think is one of the most impressive ones in international football, really, uh, for this amount of matches played. Uh, he won the African Cup of Nations in 2019, and then we had those two very difficult results that we spoke about uh, in the recent in recent history. Um, Jamal Belmadi is obviously, I think people know him as somebody that's a man manager. Uh, he can uh, psychologically motivate the players. He seems to have a close relationship with his players. Maybe with the media, uh, there can be sometimes some tension, some conflict. Um, some people saw him at the last AFCON and they saw somebody on the touchline that was very angry at the referees, yelling, maybe complaining too much. Is this just his character or is he extra stressed? We don't know. Uh, this, these are questions that I want to ask you. How do you see Jamal Belmadi as a coach? What are some of his strengths? What are some of his weaknesses? Um, Belmadi likes to speak first about tactics. Uh, he's playing like a back four. Always, except against Sam Cameroon. Uh, but um, all the way he was uh, Algerian manager, he's playing with a back four. And he, he like, I have the, the, the feeling that he like to um, he likes to give some um, freedom to his offensive players. And if I want to be a little bit like to... to um, caricaturize, I don't know if we're saying that in, in English. Um, it seems like the game plan today for Jamel Belmadi is to give the ball to the players that have the technical abilities. So Red Mahrez, of course, um, Amura, Youssef Blaili, if he uh, come, comes back, um, Shaibi, Adam Unas when he's playing. And then Pray, like they're able individually to make the difference and to win games. 
alone. And it's a, a bit of shame that after maybe five years or, or six years, uh, Jamel is maybe more, six years, Jamel is, is a technical manager. We do not have the collective strength that Algeria had when they won our AFCON in uh, 2019. So yeah, tactically, he likes his back four. Tactically, he needs his individual strengths on the both sides of, uh, of the attack. But after that, if of course, uh, his character, his temper, he he's very not angry but nervous, and I think he can transmit uh, the way he lives games with passion, a lot of passion, to the negative way to the players on the pitch. If you are Islam Slimani, Riyad Mahrez, you have the you 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 knowing him since. Six years, man. No, uh, now, but from new players, maybe it's a little bit difficult. You have to adapt. You have to to have the the the, the feeling that, yeah, he likes to make some passion of the the game, but you do not have to say that Jamel Belmadi does not have any influence and in uh, any influence. On the way uh, players are uh, behave on the pitch. So yeah, th there are strengths and there is uh, there are weakness. There are sorry uh, weakness. Uh, the way Belmadi is. So let's go through this starting eleven uh, because I think I have some. I think most people that follow Algerian football have a few questions, maybe especially about the two central defenders and maybe the midfield, who's going to play in midfield, especially the number six position, but really the three in midfield in general. Uh, can you take us through maybe who's going to start in every position? And then maybe we can talk about those two areas of the pitch in particular. So who, for example, who's going to be the goalkeeper? Let's start with the goalkeeper. Except a big, uh, big surprise. It will be Anthony Mondrea. Anthony Mondrea is uh, playing in France uh, in Stade Malherbe de Caen in French Ligue 2. And he's the number one six, uh, since September. Uh, he did an amazing game against Senegal. So big chance he will start. 95%, but not 100. Why? Because there is uh, Raïs Mbolhi, the historical goalkeeper, one of the players that play the most for, for the national team. He's coming back uh, with Seher Belouizdad in uh, Algeria, and champion of Algeria. He's playing in Champions League games. He was not... Um, his last called up was like a year ago, but maybe he will be there with his experience, but maybe number one, maybe number two. I think, I believe it will be Mondrea, um, goalkeeper, Youssef Atal, right back, which is a little bit a problem because he is suspended by um, French Football League since uh, two months now. His uh, last uh, game he played with Nice was October the 1st. He played then with Algeria in October and in, in November. Algerian Federation uh, is uh, preparing him physically to be able to play uh, during the, the AFCON. Um, left back, it will be Ait Nouri from Wolverhampton. Center back, Mondi and Ben Sebaini. Villarreal, Aysa Mondi, and uh, in, in La Liga, and Ben Sebaini, Dortmund. So here's a question. These two center halves, I think they played together in 2017 at the African Cup of yeah. Nations. They know each other for six years now. Why do people have questions about these two center halves? I've heard criticism like maybe Aysa Mondi is too slow when there's space behind him. Uh, quick attackers can, can you know, get behind him. Maybe Ben Sebaini can make mental mistakes. Some people say they're better as center halves, you know, in the back three, maybe this player, this right center back and this left center back, but maybe not. This. In your opinion, can they do the job as center halves? They played um, together seven years ago and it was not a success. Since Ben Sebaini was moved as a left back, but today you have Ait Nouri. So Ben Sebaini is coming back at center back, but even if his club, he's playing as a left back. So there is a first question about him. 
But Ben Sebaini, was, when he's playing uh, center back, lies, like in against Uganda, it was in Douala in Cameroon uh, in June. He was playing and he was really well. He did a very good job. And Aysamondi. Aysamondi, he's in national team since 10 years now. He became a center back after. He was a right back. And yeah, I think Mandy can be the, the weakness. Even if for Jamel Belmadi, there is no doubt at all that Ben Sebaini and Mandy will be the central defenders uh, during a fun. But of course, uh, Aysa Mandi, I think he played with Ben Sebaini. He, he played with uh, Tugai. He played with some of the players in the last weeks. He was not the leader he's supposed to be. And as you, you mentioned, um, he has some weakness with his speed when uh, he has to, adju to adjust and to adapt to different type of strikers. The best Aysamondi we saw with Algeria was with Ben Lamri. But Jamal Eddin Ben Lamri, uh, champion of Africa four years ago, is not there anymore. So yeah, there is a question for us, but there is not a question for Jamal Ben Lamri. And so how about this midfield? In midfield, it seems like we have eight or nine very promising midfielders, very interesting, talented, with lots of potential. But how do you take those eight or nine and how do you find the three that emerge? Who are, who are the three for you that can maybe emerge as this midfield three? Number six, two players. Zerroki from uh, Feyenoord with uh, Rotterdam in Eredivisie. And a man English uh, viewers are knowing perfectly, is Nabil Bentaleb, former Tottenham players, today with Lille. Bentaleb, like, he, he was not uh, in Algeria national team for maybe three, four or five years. He came back. And since he's, he came back, his abilities were showed. And he will, I think, he will be the, num the, the man uh, just between the defensive line and the midfield line. I think it will be Ben Taleb, but Zeroki is very loved by the Jamel Belmadi coach. Personally, I think Zeroki is a good player, but he's not playing with his right role in the uh, Algeria national team. So Ben Taleb is maybe giving more assurance, more safety for, for Algeria. So Ben Taleb will be, I think, the number six. And then you have uh, many, many players. One of maybe the most important player of the national team is Ismail Ben Nasser from uh, AC Milan. The problem is Ben Nasser is coming back from a knee injury uh, in Champions League semi-final against uh, Inter like six, six, seven months ago. Uh, since early December, he's coming back like playing 20 minutes, 30 minutes per game. He played more than one hour uh, against uh, Salernitana. So he will be there. Maybe not as a starter at the beginning of the competition, but like Is um, Ismail Assar with Senegal uh, two years ago, I, I, I think the, the will of Jamel Belmadi is to make him start in progressively and maybe the last game, the, the third game against um, Mauritania or after that, he will be playing. And Ben Nasser is... You have no question about him. He will be playing. And the last one, four players for one, one role. You have wow. Isham Boudaoui. Um, he finally has his reference game because he did very good job against Mozambique last game in, in November. You have Sofian Firouli, a um, very experienced player. Uh, he left the national team after Cameroon disaster in March uh, 2022. And he came back and did a really good job against Senegal. And you have Fares Shaibi. Every single game he played, every single game he was very good. He is like more creative player, more offensive player. So you have different 
players with different role and different uh, profile, I think it will be def- depending on who the opponent will be. And exactly. Faraz Shelby is able to play here and to play more offensive on the left side, on the right side, or false nine. I, I Before the Champions League final, when Real Madrid played Liverpool, I went to um, BBC sent me to Terrayon, Bron, which is uh, Karim Benzema's neighborhood. And I was asking people, you know, how did Karim Benzema grow up? No, no, no. It's, it's a suburb outside of Lyon. And they were telling me, oh, you're Algerian? I said, yeah. They said, there's this young kid that came out of Terrayon. His name is Ferris Shaibi. You, maybe you know his brother, Elias, and we know his brother. He played in the Algerian League and for Monaco. Uh, he was a good striker. I said, really? He's that good? Oh, I'm telling you, he's amazing. No, 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 no. I wasn't, and then I wasn't expecting him. When he started making his appearances for Toulouse, he's not really a flashy player, you know, that's going to dribble 10. May, he makes the right decisions. He's very mature. I, in his head, I love that kind of player, you know? Like, it reminds me almost like a... Maybe he's more dynamic than like a Frank Lampard, but he's somebody that you know is going to score goals. He's going to assist. He's he's going to shoot when he needs to shoot. He's going to pass when he needs to pass, and he's gonna he's very smart and very sober in his style of play. So I I, I love Ferris Shaibi, and I think he could probably definitely start. And I didn't even mention a player like Hussein Awar, which is very talented and experienced player in Europe. But Jamel Belmadi did not uh, make him start in any of the big friendly games against Tunisia, Senegal, and um, and Egypt. So I, I think Awar will be there if he's coming back from his minor injury, but not as, as a, a starter, starter. So that third midfield position, there's a lot of competition, but we think Ben Taleb and Ben Nasser uh, beside them. And what about the attack? I mean, quite obviously, it should be Riyad Mahrez on the right, right? Yeah. yeah. Captain uh, Riyad uh, Mahrez is the only guy you know he will start. And as midfield players, you have so much potential. Um, number nine, for example. you Algeria will be played with one nine uh, more often. Number nine, you have four players. Islam Slimani. We do not have to present uh, Islam Slimani, best scorer ever in national team. He's playing now in Brazil, in Curitiba. Um, Every game he played, and he is playing with Algeria, every game he will give everything and he will be de- scoring goals. And he's an important leader to, to the group. You have Baghdad Bounedjah from Al Sadd, the guy who scored in the final four years ago of AFCON. You have Amin Guiri from Stade René in France. New players, new player, but... I have some doubt about his abilities to play alone as a central nine. Um, he he was there against Egypt and uh, Cap Verde in October, playing against Egypt and only uh, central nine because Cap Verde was two two strikes, and he was like useless because he's is not have maybe the the type for playing in that position in that role. And the last one, Mohamed Amoura, which is not the guy uh, maybe the most uh, famous yet, but he is an unbelievable talent. He's playing today in Belgium, in uh, Union saint gilloise He's scoring. He has a profile, totally different profile from Slimani, from Bounedjah. He's small, really quick, really physical. He's a fantastic player. So number nine, you have Slimani, Bounedjah, Guiri, and Amoura. But Amoura and Guiri have also play on the left side. But on the left side, you also have one guy, which were not here in November, were not here in October, were not here in September, and I think was even not here in June. But this guy is, how to say it? Is the most um, when he's on the pitch, he's the most dangerous guy in offensive way. If you say Belayli, he's playing now in Algeria in Mouloudia Club d'Alger. But when he's on the pitch, he is able alone to win a game. And as I said earlier, Jamel Belmadi tactics gives the ball to those players and they will win the game. And Belayli is the perfect type of what Algeria needs 
and how Algeria wins. And Algeria won four years ago with a fantastic Youssef Blady, all the AFCON. Riyad Mahrez did a good Nigeria. We, we also remember, of course, the, the free kick and in semi-final. But during all the competition, Belayli was fantastic, not Mahrez. But Belayli, we have some interrogation about his physical abilities today. How he is physically, because Algeria league was topped and uh, we don't know if he's able, able to, to play 90 minutes per game. But the, because of uh, the CAF allowed to the national team to have 27 players now, Belayli, I think, will be there and is a, a very, very good option for Jamel Ben Madi. So, number nine probably will be Islam Slimani. And left, uh, left side, you have Belayli, Amora, Gouiri, three players. Just to go through some statistics, Youssef Belayli has played in 10 matches in the Algerian League this season. He has 10 goals and six assists, I believe. Mohamed Amin Amoura has played in 14 matches in Belgium. He has 13 goals. But of those 14 matches, he only started eight of those matches. So incredible efficiency when, when he does go on the pitch. So let's talk about the star player. Let's talk about Riyad Mahrez. I'm assuming you're, he's, you're going to say he's the, he's, the most, uh, he's the biggest star player on the Algerian national team. Um, I feel like Riyad Mahrez has gone through with the national team at times like I think when Christian Gourkouf came initially, he was very, very efficient. And then under, for example, Rabah Majer, it was kind of down. And then when Jamal Belmadi came, he said, you know what? A player like Ed Mahrez, we have to give him confidence. And when initially when Jamal Belmadi came, again, his form went up like this. And now I when I see online on Twitter, it seems like many people aren't very pleased with Riyad Mahrez's performance over the last six months or so. Some people are saying Adam Unes is more effective, for example, as a backup. Um, do you think that it's absolutely imperative that Riyad Mahrez should start? We know he will, but should he start? Absolutely. And is he still capable, despite the fact that he moved to uh, Al Ahli in Saudi Arabia, is he still able of coming up with those magic moments like that free kick against Nigeria, uh, in your opinion? He will start, of course, but I don't think he's... Um, I, I don't think he, he deserves to be the one player uh, starting every game uh, no matter what. Because Mahrez, he always, always in Africa, when Algeria play, playing in, in Africa uh, away, he always have some troubles. He never doing 90 top minutes. But a few months ago, a few years ago, even if he did not uh, make great games, he was scoring a lot. He was assisting a lot. So when you're saying at the end of the game, okay, maybe 90 minutes, not, not, not top, not very good. But come on, one goal, two assists, for example, which is not more the case, which is not the case anymore. So yeah, I, I can understand criticism, but for Jamel Belmadi, he's a captain, he's a leader, and he will start every game. So he, he knows now... Uh, Riyad Mahrez, how to play in Africa. He has uh, experience. But yeah, uh, I expected more from him on the pitch. As a player that do you think that the general public, the African public or the international public doesn't really know, but will emerge? I mean, we spoke about players like Amin Amoura. We spoke about players like Shaibi. Who do you think is one of those, those two? Is that who you're going to pick? Yeah. 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 Shaibi, because he will play, I think, in the starting 11. Uh, I, as I said, I was amazed the, by how quick he became uh, important to, to the team. Um, such an important player in the starting 11. He started all friendly game, uh, big games against Tunisia, Egypt and Senegal. He scored against uh, Senegal, uh, against Mozambique last game. He, threw, he played in three positions, midfield, false nine and the left side. Um, he's only... Now his second professional season. Last year was his first one with Toulouse. Uh, involved in 15 goals. Won the Coupe de France with Toulouse. The French FA Cup. And now he's starting uh, in the starting 11 with Francfort. So, amazing player. He will uh, shine, I think, because he has the, the, the profile to shine in, in Africa. 
And as I said, uh, Amura, incredible player, fantastic statistic. I think Amura now is the Algeria player with the greatest form uh, now, starting at AFCON. He has the confidence. He's scoring goals. And I think Jamel Belmadi has to consider that the form, the, the, the current form of the players is important. So maybe Amura will play more than we think, as nine or as left uh, left uh, striker. Left okay, and, and the final thing I'm going to ask you, I don't know if you're comfortable because I know you're going to be commentating these matches, but do you have a prediction? Or, or if you're not going to give me a prediction, what would be considered a bad tournament for Algeria? What would be considered a good tournament for Algeria? What do you think is, is your opinion on those things? Um, Algeria has to finish first of their group. Why? Because if you finish first, you will play um, the next game in Bouaké. So you're staying in the same town. And you will be playing against a third of another group. Like 2019, you played against uh, Guinea in the round of, uh, of 16. So I think... I don't know if Algeria can win. The quality of the squad is incredibly deep and incredibly good. And there is not so much team in Africa that maybe Ivory Coast, maybe Senegal, uh, Morocco. But there is there are not many teams that have maybe 20, 25 very, very good players. Then can start in the starting 11. So the minimum, I think... I believe is quarterfinal. And when you're going to the top eight, everything can happen. You can go to the penalties against Ivory Coast if they finish second. You will be playing maybe in Cam against Cameroon. So quarterfinal minimum is considered as a not bad tournament. And after that, maybe the way you're playing, the, bay, the way you're scoring, the play you're winning, the, the way you're... Yeah, you, you have clearly the ability to win the competition. And Jamel Belmadi wants to win every competition he's starting. But minimum quarterfinal for Algeria will be uh, not a bad result, I think. Very good. Uh, Hamza, I'm going to thank you so much once again for joining me on the African Five-A-Side podcast. It's been a real, real pleasure speaking to you. Uh, you could see like that you've really paid attention to this team, like even telling me, you know, the three positions Fede Shabi played, you know, and with the recall to certain matches throughout the calendar year. So I really trust your objective analysis on this Algerian national team. For those that want to follow Hamza, his social media handles will be posted in the description below. Uh, I highly recommend that you uh, follow him, that you get in touch with him, and that you listen to his commentary during the African Cup of Nations. So one last time, Hamza, thank you so much, and uh, we'll speak to you soon, inshallah.